Hello fellow nerds, my name is Nick. And I'm Dom. And today we're going to talk about Fusion 360. Fusion 360 has many cool features that a team can use to help them when they're designing their robots. From simulation tools, to cloud services, among many others. Today, Dom's going to tell us about the cool things you can do in Fusion 360. So, on a team, how am I going to be able to share my designs with other members? That's a good question. So as an Autodesk product, Fusion 360 allows you to use their cloud services. That allows you to create assemblies with different parts, and you can easily share, peer review, and iterate upon each other's designs. How do you use the cloud? In Fusion 360, it is really easy to use the cloud. All you need is an Autodesk account. Luckily, Fusion 360 is free for students and hobbyists, so we can all use it. We'll post the download link in the description. To do this, you have to download the free trial, put some information in there, and then you have to create an account. Once you sign in with that, you can roll. Cool! This seems like a great tool for teams to be able to collaborate on a design from different locations. Yeah, as long as teams are on the same project, they can work together on designing. So how can you create your parts once you design them? With Fusion 360, it's really easy to export your designs to various manufacturing methods, such as CNC milling, 3D printing, or even good old-fashioned technical drawing. So how do you export your designs as a drawing? In the upper left corner of Fusion 360 is a button that says Model. If you click that, a drop-down menu will appear with many options. If you select Drawing, you can now place down a 2D model of the part you are currently drawing. Once we have our base view, we can then extend this with the projected view option. Once we are done with this, we can click enter. This will show us a full drawing of our part. Now we can dimension our part, add center lines, add center marks, even add hole patterns to determine how best to manufacture this. We can even add a smaller detail view on whatever part we want. Once we are satisfied with this design, we can export to a PDF. Nice! How about exporting to a 3D printer? Exporting to a 3D printer is super easy. When we are ready to export to a 3D model, we go up to the Make tab in the main modeling toolbar and say 3D print. We can then select our body, this plate for instance. We can preview the mesh, we can determine refinement, refinement options, we can even send it to a 3D printing slicing utility that we can use on our 3D printer. If we would rather not do that, we can save it as an STL. And what about exporting to a CNC mill? Fusion 360 has a really powerful tool that allows it to create CNC code paths. CNC with Fusion 360 is very easy. To do this, we go up to the Model tab, select CAM. This stands for Computer Aided Machining. We won't cover this in this video, but you can actually generate toolpaths that will allow you to move your part. You can even simulate the toolpath with your stock options. Like so.
Excellent. However, a team wants to make their robot, either with Tetrix parts or custom-made parts, Fusion 360 is a useful tool. Are there ways to get 3D models into your CAD designs? Yeah, you can import 3D models into the Fusion 360 quite easily. To import a part into Fusion 360, go up and select the blue Upload button in the main menu. Here, you can select files. Excellent. Are there models of commercial off-the-shelf materials I can find online? Yeah, in Fusion 360, it's really easy to import models from a master car. To import models from McMaster Car, go up to the upper center tab that says Insert in the Modeling Toolbar. There, you can say Insert McMaster Car Component. This will pull up McMaster Car's catalog where you can find screws, nuts, bolts, washers, anything you need to build your robot in a 3D model. Let's say I need a screw for this assembly. I can go into Screws and Bolts. I can select what type of screw I want. Personally, I'm a big fan of socket head screws. I can then go and I can say I want a regular socket head screw. Alloy steel is strong enough for what I need. On the left toolbar here, you can see I can select thread size. Maybe this used to be a number 10 screw. I can select length. I can select threading type. Material, finish, and other options. I can then go down and find different screw sizes that I could use. I can even find the part number for a McMaster car. This allows us to import any model that we want into an assembly. Let's say I fancy these 1 inch long number 10 screws. If I click on them, I can go to this CAD product detail sign. If I'm ready to select this, I can go to the product detail CAD button. And if I follow this, I can scroll down to the bottom of the page. And I can save this as a 3D model. Let's say I want to use a step file. I can hit 3D step. And then I can go into save. This will import the part into your 3D model. Excellent. One of my concerns is spending time designing and building my robot only to have it break because it was too weak. Uh, are there any ways to prevent this? Well, you're in luck because one of the unique features of Fusion 360 is a simulation tool. That allows you to see a stress test of your part, but that allows you to set a given load and allows you to analyze the results. So how exactly do the simulation tools work? It's super easy. Simulation in Fusion 360 is quite easy. To simulate in Fusion 360, go up to the Model button and select Simulation. We can then create a stress test of this part. There are many different options here, however the default static stress test is good enough for what we do. If we hit create study, we can then see that we have several options up here and over here. The first thing to do when you want to do study a material is to select a constraint. This is where your part will be stopped by another piece. In this case, this piece screws into our, a top plate, so this piece at the top will be stopped. So we will select that. Then we need to select the load. To do this, we select the loads button, and we can select a face we want to apply force on. So if we want to apply force on that point, we're going to select force on this bearing hole, which will be supporting our axle to our wheels. We can then select a move this to the right direction 
and we can get it how we want it to be. Let's say we want it like this, and this is the force of the bearing. We then have an option to change the magnitude of this. Normally this is set to newtons. However, for rookie teams, and veteran teams alike, new we don't think in newtons. We think in pounds. Maybe kilograms. If we go to the change units button here, we can select newtons, dynes, pounds, ounces, or tons. Let's select pounds. We can then say, since this is supporting a quarter of a robot, and our robot can weigh 42 pounds, why don't we put it at 12 pounds? Roughly a quarter of a robot. Those are the two big things we have to do in order to make a single piece simulated. Once we are done with that, we can go up to the Solve tab and hit Solve. One advantage of Fusion 360 is that we can render on the cloud. Autodesk has servers which we can render and simulate different parts without having to do it on a local machine. If you select the On Cloud button here and select your simulation model, we can then say Solve One Study. This may take a while, but it is definitely worth the wait. And you're, you're gonna have a fun time editing this, I bet. Okay. Once our job is done, we can hit close and see a 3D model of our part. Currently, it is showing the safety factor of our part. This means, if we have a safety factor of 15, the maximum that they calculate to, it would take 15 times the force that we are currently putting on it to break this part. As you can see, our part is really strong. We can also, if we go into safety factor, see stress, and see where the stress points of this are. One thing to keep in mind, Fusion 360 will automatically deform your part. To fix this and keep it normal, on the deformation scale here, if you click undeformed, it will look more like your real part. As you can see in this current stress test, the least amount of force are on the outsides of our part, while the most force is being put right in the center. Since there's so little force on this piece, it doesn't matter too much, but if there's more force, we'd want to compensate for this and add a bit more bulk here. We can also see displacement, reaction force, and strain, but those two aren't too important. Fusion 360 seems like a really great tool, but it also seems hard to use. Are there a lot of resources to help people learn how to use it? Once you familiarize yourself with Fusion 360, it's quite easy to use. There are some very useful tools inside of the program, as well as many online tools. What resources would you recommend teams check out in order to get better at Fusion 360? Unlike other 3D modeling softwares, Fusion 360 is an active community of hobbyists. Not only does Autodesk have a ton of tutorial videos, but they also created forums for Fusion 360. Not only that, but also a lot of community hobbyists have created videos showing people how to use Fusion 360. Well, thanks for your time, Dom. I learned a lot of cool stuff about Fusion 360. In time, Nick. Our next video in the series is going to be talking about CNC milling and how to do that in Fusion 360. See, See you, you next time, time nerds! nerds.